Welcome back to yet another episode of my Let's Play series. We're now on episode 5, and in the last video we made quite a bit of progress on this middle section of my starter base. And then I also went ahead and got myself a beacon as well. And based off the last two videos, you'd be right in guessing that I'll be working on this area today. However, I won't be building up all of it, as I'll mainly be focusing on this square here. And unless you're a part of the 50% of people that accidentally clicked on this video, you already know this is going to be where I'm building my mines. And in order to make this mine that I have planned, I'm going to need to dig a pretty big hole. But before I can do that, I'm going to have to deal with all this water. And the first step in doing that is to build up a retaining wall. So I started off by using a variation of stone, cobblestone, and stone bricks to make the center part of the wall. I then placed a bunch of strip spruce logs and spruce fence gates on top of the stone, in a similar design to what I've been using underneath some of the platforms in the village, to kind of hold all the stone in place. Even though new water can't get in, it's obviously still completely full of water. And a lot of fish, apparently. Jeez. In episode 2, when I had to drain the bottom of the boat, I ended up just filling it up with sand and breaking it all, but I feel like this area is just a little bit too big for that, so I think I want to go find a monument and get some sponges. But before I head off there, I think I want to get a few things first. Including some TNT, because I think that's probably the best way to enter the monument, granted you can't break any blocks. Some slime blocks, as they're insta-mine even with the mining fatigue. And then making some water breathing potions would probably be a good idea, but I really don't want to make potions, so I think I'll just put respiration on my helmet for now. And with all that stuff made, I think I'm good to go. If you have your render distance pretty high up, there's a point in this ocean where you can see four monuments at once, so if one of those doesn't have sponges, then I guess I'm just filling it up with sand. Alright, I've made it to a monument now, and since we're over here, I might as well just break in on this side. The monument does actually have a front door, but I feel like if you go in that way, you're just asking to get lost. So instead, what I like to do is just create a little setup like this, and then just explode my way in. And there's the first one taken care of. A second. And the third. Now I just need to look around until I find some sponge rooms. It probably would have been smart to bring a milk bucket, but you know me. I think the best way to find one of these sponge rooms is actually just going to be to dig into this diagonal section here, and swim around to see if there's any dark prismarine. It looks like there's some here, so this could be a sponge room. And of course it's going to be like that. It's not looking like there's going to be any sponges in this monument, but I guess I might as well at least get the gold. So I guess I better go find a new monument then. And hopefully I can get a little bit more lucky on this one. There we go. It looks like it's just going to be the one. Yeah. But even just the sponges from one room should be more than enough for now. But wet sponges aren't going to be that useful to me, and because I don't have a super smelter yet, I think I want to dry them off in the nether. Which is actually a pretty satisfying process. And now that I finally have sponges, I can get back to work on the mine. And luckily this shouldn't be a big enough space where I need to build up any temporary sand walls or anything. I should be able to just go for it. There, I've got this all drained now. But before I start digging down, I think I just want to take this hill back a few blocks so that I have more room to make this hole a little bit bigger. I don't want to be destroying too much of this mountain, I'm thinking just enough where I can make the mine more of a square shape. Yeah, I think that's going to work out a lot better. You can kind of see on this layer of stone here how much I expanded it by. It's not too much, but it's enough to make a difference. I think I just want to add a little bit more grass onto this hill. Yeah, that definitely looks a little nicer. Anyway, I think I'm good to start digging now. And the first thing I want to do is just to dig a little hole in the middle so I can decide how deep I want it to go. So let's do that. I think that's a pretty good depth. 
It's about at that point where it's just barely reaching into the deep slate portion of the world, but it's not too deep where it just looks like a hole rather than a mine. Well, when I'm finished with it anyway, it's obviously just going to look like a hole for a while. But the hole's obviously not done yet, so I think it's time we start digging out the rest. I have about two thirds of the hole dug out now, but as you can see my pickaxe is getting pretty low on durability, so I think I'll head over to the enderman farm to fix that. There, that should be more than enough to finish the hole. Probably a terrible idea without the elytra, but I'm going to do it anyway. Once I'm finished taking the rest of this down, I'll place in bone meal a bunch of moss in all the walls, and then break it all to create a more randomized effect. And if the moss doesn't work, I'll create the same effect by just randomly mining the walls. So let's get back to the time lapse. So using the moss didn't end up working too well. I think if I wanted to use it, I would have had to mine the entire hole with it, rather than just trying to texture the walls. But even with the walls looking a lot less flat, it still just looks like a hole rather than a mine. Because, well, it is just a hole. So the first thing I want to do to make it look more like a mine is add a way to get up and down. So far I've just been using this water stream that I put on top of my beacon to swim up to the top, but that's obviously a very temporary solution, so I think I want to add a ladder going from the top all the way to the bottom. And the design I want to use for Slatter is just alternating between a row of spruce fences and then a row of strip spruce wood. And then just continuing that pattern all the way up to the top. Although this kind of looks like a ladder, you obviously can't climb it. So I'll just have to place a regular ladder up through the middle so it's actually usable. It'd be nice if these ladders were a little bit darker to kind of blend in with the spruce better, but these will just have to do. Not gonna lie, swimming up the water was a lot faster than this. And now that I have a hole with a ladder in it, I think I need to start building the mines. And to do that, I'll be digging out several of these almost rooms all throughout the hole, each of them decorated according to the ore that spawns at that level. For example, Y56 is where copper spawns most frequently, which is around the level that I'm at now. So this room will be mostly decorated with copper. I'm finished mining out this first area, so now I'm building up this little walkway slash platform out of spruce slabs. I think the slabs by themselves are looking a little bit plain, so I'll just mix in some trapdoors as well. And it probably wouldn't be that bad of an idea to add a railing as well. So now as long as you trip in the right spots, you'll be fine. That looks pretty good, but since this is a copper mine, I should probably add some copper. And to do that, I'll build these two little piles of copper ore on either side of this little mined out area, and then maybe mix in some block of raw copper into them as well, which look a little bit more mined. And then I'll just sprinkle some copper ore all throughout this area as well. And now that it's actually starting to look like a copper mine, what it needs now is a bit of life. First things first, I'll add some barrels. An easy way to add some life to pretty much anything. The next thing I want to add is some wooden supports, to help the cave from collapsing on all the miners. I can't imagine these would actually hold up the cave that much, but they look like they do, so that's good enough for me. I'm really liking the way these vines are hanging down into the mines, so I'm thinking I'll put some throughout this area too and maybe some other greenery on top of that. Not to the point where it becomes a lush cave, but just enough to add a bit of color. Obviously some of the vines still need to grow, because for some reason you still can't bone meal them, but even just having the leaves and spore blossoms there really improved the area. And now that I've added some foliage, there's only one thing I need to add, and that's lighting. In a cave setting, these torches don't look too terrible. Well, they kind of do actually. So instead what I want to do is just hang from chains from the ceiling, and then just hang some lanterns from the bottom of those. And that definitely looks a lot better than the torches. Although it probably hasn't been that long for you watching the video, I've been mining and building in this cave for quite a while now, so I think I'm going to head up to the surface and do some work there. And the first thing I want to do up here is to connect these two areas. 
So far I've been using pathways like this one here to connect areas. But the difference over here is I want boats to be able to come into this area. Which means this pathway will have to be able to move in and out. And by move in and out, of course I mean look like it can move in and out. Because even if you came up with some kind of crazy redstone contraption that moved this, I can't imagine it looking too good. The final thing to consider is the technology that these people would have. If I make anything too technologically advanced, it would just look out of place when compared to the rest of it. But after messing around with it for a while, I think I came up with a pretty good design. So I'll start the same way I start any pathway, just by placing some jungle slabs. The only difference with this one is that because it's out of water, I didn't add any weathering to it. And now that I have the platform built, I can build up the structure that actually moves it. So I'll start by building up a little bit of a pillar like this and then just copying it over three times, just like this, and then connecting them up with some chains. And now all I need to do is connect the platform to these chain lines. And for that I came up with this design for a little connector piece, making use of the campfires and a grindstone. Then just connect that piece to some spruce fences. And maybe add a lever or two for some added detail, but I think that will do the trick. And the last thing I want to do before heading back into the mines is this square here, which will act as another supply or storage platform like the one over there. And since this isn't anything new, I'll just do it quick off camera. There, that's done now, it's basically just the standard platform design, and then I added some barrels and some more dried kelp blocks as well. I ended up doing one new thing, and that's this barrel I made out of dark oak trap doors. I then filled it with this raw iron block, which I think kind of looks like fish. Or at least close enough where I can just slap a fish on top and call it a day. I was going to fix this later, but it's starting to drive me crazy. The top of this mine is way too square, but I'm sure you've seen enough of me mining stone for a little while, so I think I'll just fix that up off camera. That's looking much smoother. I also built up these two areas just so that the transition between stone and wood wasn't so abrupt. But now that I've taken a break from the mines, I can start to get back to work. Also, now that it's been a few minutes, all the vines have grown now, which looks a lot better. And the next platform is going to be 10 to 12 blocks below the first one, which puts me at Y level 40. And if you look at the ore distribution charts, or just look around me, you'll see that it's mostly copper still, but it also starts to get into iron as well. And this platform will start with the last one left off, just curving around here, making its way back to the ladder. Or at least that's what it would do if I didn't run out of slabs. I think I'll also add a small platform up in here, just because it's looking a little bit plain. It's nowhere near the optimal level for mining coal, but it's as close as I can get in this mine, so that's what this one would be themed as. Even just something like that should be enough to fill the space. To connect these two new layers, I'm just using the same ladder again that I used over there. It'd make most sense to connect this platform to this one here, but instead I'm going to put up a new ladder coming up from this bottom platform. But it's not like this mine makes much sense anyway. Like, why would you dig it through water when you can move back 20 blocks and not have to worry at all about it? Like, this retaining wall could break at any moment and just flood the whole thing. And now that all three layers are connected, I can start to work on some of the detailing. Starting by adding some texture, just like I did on the first platform. The first thing I want to build into the wall is actually a little mine shaft, because what's a mine without a couple mine cards? So I'll just fill up this little space that I dug out with some rails, and then place a minecart with a chest in it, so it looks like it's carrying something. I made the track turn at each end and put a light source around each of the corners, so that way when you look at it from afar, it looks like it actually comes and goes somewhere, because I'm far too lazy to build an actual track. And then I'll finish this mine shaft by just adding a few support beams into the walls and ceiling. And yeah, I think that looks pretty good, actually. It might look even better if the minecart was moving around a bit, but as you can probably tell by how overgrown this mine is, it hasn't been used in a while, so I can't imagine the minecart would be moving either. And again, I really don't want to build a minecart system. This little area will pretty much be a continuation of the first layer. So we'll start by just putting up a little pile of copper ore, mixing in some raw copper blocks as well, and then just adding some barrels. But one thing I want to do differently down here is to add some dripstone into the mix. Because in case you didn't know, copper actually spawns more frequently inside of dripstone caves. So I thought it'd be fitting to include that. To light up this area, I just hung lanterns from chains. But over here, there's not much of a flat ceiling to do that from. So I think I'll just have to build up some hangers. Something like this should do. So now I just need to hang some chains from them. And then place the lanterns. Now all that's left to do is just add some foliage. And the lower I go down from the top, the less I'll add, as you wouldn't get nearly as much sunlight at the bottom. My pickaxe is getting close to breaking yet again, so before I continue, I'll have to take care of that. But instead of fixing my pick with mending this time, I think I'm just going to make a new one. So, uh, remember last episode when I said I thought the villagers would be fine? I might have been a little bit wrong, so, uh, rest in peace. You can and will be replaced.
With my new pick acquired, I can start to get back to work on the mine. I don't think I'm going to do anything too special on this wall, probably just some more ores and foliage, so let's just do that quick. Might help if I actually hit it. There. Just like I said, nothing too special. Now all that's left to do is the coal mine, which will be pretty similar to the other ones. So basically just some coal ore, some barrels, a few lanterns, leaves, vines, and a spore blossom. And I don't really think there's any other items that would go specifically in with the coal. Maybe some furnaces, actually. And with those three sections done, it's actually starting to look like a mine now, which is always good when you're building a mine. Based off the parts I've built so far, I think you can get a pretty good idea of what the next sections are going to look like, so I might as well build them in a time lapse. And I think I'll build another one of these mine shafts going along here as well. So let's do that then. I only ended up fully decorating a few of these layers, but even now that I have most of the platforms in place, it's really starting to look finished from above. I never planned on letting the mine get this overgrown, but now that it is, it actually doesn't look too bad, so I think I'll leave it for now. Since there's only one platform left to build, I might as well just quickly do that now. And this level's supposed to be the diamond mining section. But because I don't have any diamond ores, I might have to do that next episode. So you know how last episode I ran out of food, so I went into the nether, killed a bunch of hoglins, and got a whole shocker box full of cooked pork chop? Yeah, I've already eaten over half of that. So maybe I should stop running and jumping in circles when I'm not recording. But anyway, back to not getting distracted. I didn't come up with this idea until I was working on the time lapse, but I thought it'd be cool if maybe while they were mining, they came across some fossils. So they set up some kind of archaeology site in this area to uncover them. Despite me playing the game for several years, I've never found one, but you can actually find fossils like the one I'm building underground. Granted, I've never actually looked for them. And they look pretty much exactly like the ones you'll find in Soul Sand Valleys. I've seen diorite used to texture bones, but I think on a smaller scale it might just be a little bit too much. So instead, I think I want to mix in a few mushroom stems into the bottoms of them. Yeah, I think that works. I just came up to get a few more materials, and it looks like we've got yet another trader. Except this one actually has a pretty decent deal. It's doing one emerald for two leads. All the archaeology stuff is yet to be added to the game, so I'll just have to make do with what I've got. And I think a piece of weed is probably going to be as close as I can get to one of those archaeology brush thingies. And with the rest of this section, I'll just do what I did with the other ones, starting by adding some barrels. And then adding some leaves. Perfect. And the next layer could be pretty interesting as well, because while I was mining out, I actually found a geode in the wall, so hopefully I'll be able to theme it around that. So the first thing I'll do is just dig a little tunnel going into it. And then make it look better by pretty much just copying the vanilla mineshaft design. I think I might also just break up this geode a bit, just so it looks like it's actually being mined. Probably don't want to break much more than that. And I can use some of the amethyst that I just mined to create these little piles. And maybe scatter a few shards as well. At the end of this episode, I'll be building a crane that would be used to bring all the resources up to the surface. So I thought it'd be cool if I made one of those little platforms that you put all the materials on to be lifted. Like one of these things, so that way the crane can come down and somehow manage to bend its way around these platforms and hook up to this and then just pull it up. Also, am I the only one that makes a new crafting table every time I need one? Like, what is this? And then I have another one over there, too. I've added a bit of tuff and iron into the wall, so now pretty much all I need to do is add the foliage. So let's just do that quick. There, that's pretty much it for this area. Now, except for the diamond platform that I'll be doing next episode, all I have left is this one here. And down here, I have an entrance into a pretty big cave system, so I'll definitely be incorporating that into this level. Starting by making the entrance just a little bit more structured. And it wouldn't be a bad idea to make actually getting in and out of the cave a little bit easier, so that way if someone goes out into the cave, they can actually get back in without climbing up a wall. And to do that, I'll just make yet another one of these ladders. 
which I guess is still technically just climbing a wall, but I think this will be a little bit easier. And then I'll decorate the rest of the area with some stuff that the people exploring the caves might need, such as a map, a pickaxe, a journal, and then some lanterns that they can bring in. And then since I don't have a dedicated layer for either of these, I think I'll just mix some redstone and lapis into the walls. And that's the final layer complete, which means everything I have left to do is just some smaller details, so why don't I just do that in a time lapse? Well that ended up being a lot more building than I had expected, but the mine's pretty much done now. And I spent most of the time lapse working down in this area. And down at the bottom I made a few piles of barrels and scattered a few pickaxes on the ground in attempts to make it look like the hole's still being dug down. Cause we're only like 10 blocks into the deep slate so there's still lots of room to go. And then I also built another one of these crane platforms, cause if you're digging a hole there's obviously going to be quite a lot of material to bring up. Which reminds me, on the first one of these that I built, this little top piece would actually be part of the crane, so I should probably just take that one off. And with constant downward expansions, you'd obviously need some new platforms as well, which is why over here I tried to make it look like there was one about to be built by adding this little pile of wood. And the last thing I did in the mines during the time lapse was add this little mine shaft, except this one comes out of the wall, and there's not really much point in that other than I need to fill some space. And with all that in place, the mine's pretty much done. This is definitely the biggest project I've done so far in the series, so let me know what your favorite part is. For me, I think it's this archaeology area, but I also really like the way the geode level turned out as well. And then up on the surface, I built a second crane. However, this one's a lot bigger. And now that I see it again, it kind of looks like a teapot, but that's fine. And then I also realized that I totally forgot to add all the posts to the docks last episode, so I just quickly did that too. But with all that done, that's going to be it for me today, so thanks for watching, and see you all in the next episode.